Please subscribe to this YouTube channel Mentor Talk Can Do Press Bell Button for Notifications Continuing from uh, the, the previous episode Today let me talk about the, the facts associated with police and judicial custody Police custody and judicial custody Including you know difference between the two Yani पुलिस और न्यायिक हिरासत से जुड़े तथ्य पुलिस कस्टडी इंप्लाइज और सजेस्ट दैट पुलिस हैव फिजिकल कस्टडी ऑफ द अक्यूज वेर एज जुडिशियल कस्टडी इंडिकेट्स एन अक्यूज इज इन द कस्टडी ऑफ द कोर्ट ऑफ द मैजिस्ट्रेट और टू पुट इट मोर सिंपली इन द कस्टडी ऑफ द जुडिशरी In the police custody, the accused is lodged in the lockup of a police station. Concerned, as you know, I had discussed in the previous episode. You know, after lodging of an FIR for a cognizable offence, police make an arrest of the accused. Basically, you know, to to prevent him from tampering, manipulating, interfering with the evidence, or influencing witnesses, and. to interrogate him for furthering the investigation inquiry in the matter including you know getting leads and recovery of evidence such as weapons used in the offense etc according to uh, uh you know the law within 24 hours you know the police is is uh, obligated to produce the accused before the magistrate and then the magistrate would you know allow the police custody or the judicial custody as the case may be at one stretch the police custody is allowed not beyond 15 days and thereafter thereafter you know extensions are granted if deemed necessary by the concerned court now it is now now is the judicial custody different from the police custody well let us first understand what judicial custody is you know in serious and heinous offenses like you know murder rape robbery kidnapping etc the court may allow the the request of the prosecution you know representing the police to remand the accused in judicial custody after the expiry of the police custody basically to ensure that the evidence or witnesses are not, not manipulated the accused is typically kept in judicial custody which is you know is kept in in a jail under the court's custody he is for all practical purposes he is an inmate you know as if he is undergoing a sentence or or imprisonment in the manner as any convict would undergo a, such a sentence or imprisonment and be in the jail custody it is significant to note that the law mandates filing of charge sheet in criminal cases within 60 or 90 days as the case may be depending on the uh, offense committed if the charge sheet is not filed within 60 or 90 days as the case may be the court would ordinarily grant bail to the accused now until the charge sheet is not filed you know 60 or 90 days as i mentioned during that period an accused could be placed in judicial custody you know during the the time the 60 or 90 days he could be in the jail and even in the jail after filing of the church charge sheet as well the the accused could still be kept in the jail in, in the judicial custody to say so so that you know basically the whole process of trial uh, in in such a case is not prejudiced in 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 any manner so it is you know i would say really important for all of you to go through uh, section 167 of the code of criminal procedure 1973 section 167 of crpc it deals with you know diverse situations and and consequences of custody you know it provides that whenever any person is arrested and detained in custody and it appears that the investigation cannot be completed within the period of 24 hours 24 hours and there are grounds for believing that the the accusation or information is well founded against the accused 
the police shall immediately produce the accused before the judicial magistrate this is situation one one you know on the expiry of 20, before the expiry of 24 hours or on the expiry of 24 hours here the accused has to be produced next it provides that the magistrate to whom the accused person is forwarded or let's say produced may authorize the detention of the accused in such custody as the magistrate may think fit or deem fit for a term for a term not exceeding 15 days in a whole in, in the whole not exceeding 15 days in the whole thirdly it is provided in that section that the magistrate may authorize the detention of the accused person otherwise then in the custody of the police beyond the period of 15 days even beyond the period of 15 days if he is satisfied that adequate grounds exist for doing so but 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 no magistrate shall authorize the detention of the accused person in custody for a total period exceeding 90 days where the investigation relates to an offense punishable with death imprisonment of life um, uh, or for, uh, for a term of not less than 10 years so 90 days where the investigation relates to an offense punishable with death imprisonment for life or imprisonment for term not less than 10 years this is the duration within which a charge sheet must be filed as well and then you know i was talking about previously the duration of 60 days you know that that applies where the investigation relates to any other offense you know other than those which i just mentioned and on the expiry of the set period of 90 days or 60 days as the case may be the accused person shall be released on bail if he is prepared to and does furnish the bail uh, bond and fulfills all the formalities for bail fourth point which is the final point i believe no magistrate shall authorize detention in any custody uh, uh, unless the accused is produced before him so it cannot be in absentia custody physical production of the accused is mandatory hope you found this episode informative uh, i hope to see you again with another episode of the mentor talk Please feel free to send in your comments and requests if any. Thank you. Bye for now. Stay safe. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel Mentor Talk and do press bell button for notifications.